Hey everyone, this is Misha with Megaport. During this video, we're going to be demonstrating how to provision AWS's Direct Connect service called Hosted Connect. Hosted Connections enable AWS Direct Connect partners such as Megaport the ability to provision private connectivity on demand to AWS Cloud. We're going to go over the steps on how you can deploy dedicated private connections from both the Megaport portal on my screen and the AWS Management Console. So let's jump right in. So once you're logged into your Megaport portal, I have a port that I created earlier, for example, that's in a data center within a specific location, and I just so happen to choose Ashburn in the United States. You essentially can create a port or a virtual Megaport cloud router from any of our enabled locations around the world. Okay, so first and foremost, what we wanna do is we wanna provision a VXC, which is a productized virtual cross connect, and we're gonna click on AWS. And then from here, you'll notice that we have hosted virtual interface ports, and we also have hosted connection ports. Both of these types live underneath the Direct Connect family, and you can see a description with their details here on the right. What we're going to do is focus on hosted connect. So essentially, a hosted connection with a speed capacity of 500 meg or less can support a private or a public virtual interface. A hosted connection with a capacity of 1 gigabits per second or up to 10 gig or more, uh, can support a private, a public, or a transit virtual interface. Now, keep in mind on this transit virtual interface because this is what's gonna give you the ability to spin up and enable a transit gateway. So if it just so happens that you're looking to use the AWS networking service transit gateway, you wanna make sure that you have a hosted connection that supports one, one gig up to 10 gig. Now, the key features include the AWS port fees built through Amazon, so you'll be charged that directly from Amazon. This is dedicated capacity, so the speed that you choose that is dedicated capacity on the circuit. And you'll set these VXC speeds in increments, so they are tiered speeds from 50 meg up to 10 gig, and there are no VXC speed changes. So you still have the control to be able to use these services for as little as long as you need, depending on the workload. However, you'll want to keep in mind up front on what speeds you want per instance. Now, we, we already lightly touched on this, but again, Transit Gateway essentially is the, the transit hub within AWS to manage uh, multiple VPCs. If you're trying to simplify your networking within AWS, that could be a great feature for you, a great service. You'll want to make sure that you have a Transit VIT that is at one gig or more. And then last but not least, supporting diverse ports for resiliency. We even color code these for you. So as you're picking and choosing a unique hosted connect service location in this portal, you can pick and choose based off of the diversity zone and the color. If you need more steps, you can be redirected to our Megaport knowledge base that goes over user guides and step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on hosted connect. And now I'm gonna choose and filter by country. And as we keep adding new locations and countries, you'll see this list continue to grow. Um, we're going to go ahead and pick on USA. And I'm going to choose one that's close to where my physical port is. For example, if I was concerned with latency and wanted a location to get into the AWS cloud region that was more in proximity to where my, my physical mega port or my virtual mega port cloud router existed, I, I would do so. Uh, so for this one, you can see at the top, we have one in Reston. Uh, both for diversity zone in orange and in blue for US East one uh, cloud region with AWS. I'll select the first one. Um, and I know that Reston is in the same metro as my Ashburn physical megaport and click next. Okay, so jumping right here, I'm gonna go ahead and name this connection. Let's do AWS HC for host to connect primary and one. I'm gonna leave the invoice reference number blank. If you have one, you can use that for your own billing and accounting uh, tracking. And then for the rate limit, you can do 50 meg up to 10 gig in tiered speeds. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the minimum one gig that opens up the transit virtual interface capability for transit gateway. I immediately see my monthly rate for this connection. And then if you have a pre-assigned VLAN for your network uh, on your device that's going to be um, peering directly with AWS, feel free to use that or leave it blank and make it seamless. And we will populate one on your behalf through AWS as well. Okay, the last thing I need is the AWS account ID that I want to provision this circuit for. So I'm going to hop right into my management console in AWS, and you can see I'm on my dashboard. I'm going to go over to my account, and then under account settings, I'm going to capture the account ID. 
And then I'll hop right back into the Megaport portal. Let me paste this in this column and click next. I get a summary of my VXC service, and then I can add this VXC into on the left-hand field what looks like a shopping cart. And when I'm ready, I can go ahead and click on order. And now this new window that popped up is gonna display a few things for me as it's validating the order. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and see my monthly rate for this VXC connection. And then I can look at my terms and conditions through the Megaport Global Service Agreement. And when I'm ready and comfortable, I can go ahead and click on order now. And essentially that's it. So you going ahead and building out and deploying this virtual cross connect to get access into AWS Direct Connect using hosted connect. Um, and from this point on, you can scroll down through here and you can see that I, I picked this service location for this cloud region within AWS and the first diversity zone that I chose in my name. Once this is fully deployed, it will then go into a configured state. I can now go ahead and hop into my AWS management console. And now that I'm back on my dashboard, I'm gonna scroll down and go under networking and content delivery. And let me go ahead and click on direct connect. And if I click on connections, this is exactly where my new connections will live anytime that I provision one for Megaport. Okay, perfect. Now you can see that we have a brand new connection over here and it's in an ordering state. So if I go ahead and click on it, I can accept it, confirm, and then it moves that state into pending. So in another couple brief moments, this will go from pending to available once it's finished provisioning on the AWS side. And once it does that, you can follow the next step, which is then creating a virtual interface. Okay, perfect. Now that the state has changed to available, I can go ahead and click on create a virtual interface. And what we want to do here is we're going to choose a transit VIF for this example to support transit gateway. You do have three options, private, public, and transit, all supporting different services um, within AWS. We'll go ahead and give this virtual interface a name. So I'm just going to do AWS HC for host connect, and we'll just do one. We already have a name for our connection itself. We created earlier, and this is going into my account. You can choose other accounts. Your gateway type, um, essentially, if you want to do um, transit gateway, you want to associate this to a direct connect gateway. Just like you would create your own VPCs, you're going to want to create the direct connect gateway to associate to this transit virtual interface, okay? So for here, I have a whole list of different gateways. Um, I created a Direct Connect gateway earlier. You would want to do the same thing. So that's one step you'll do on your own. The VLAN we left blank earlier, so it's populated for me. And then you're going to go ahead and sign a BGP ASN number. That number is going to reflect what you're going to use to peer with Amazon. So you would put in your BGP ASN. I have one saved in my tab. And then a couple things that you can note as additional settings that are, are optional is if you click on the dropdown, you can choose between IP version four and version six, and then you can even uh, provide your own slash interconnect space. So an IP that you would assign and pre-allocated on your device, and then the other IP in that range that would be for Amazon to establish the BGP peering relationship. If you have an authentication key and you wanna apply a password, you can. If you leave these three blank, they are going to get pre-populated for you, and we will show you what that looks like to make this even more seamless. Last but not least, if you need Jumbo Frame support and you want to frame size MTU all the way up to 8500, you can enable that on your virtual interface right here. Let me go ahead and clear that. I'm going to leave those blank and go ahead and click on Create a Virtual Interface. And now what you can see at the very bottom is this state that is pending. Uh, and the type being a transit virtual interface. We have our VLAN associated. And if you go ahead and click on the ID, you're now going to see what was assigned to you that we left blank for optional. You have your password for your authentication key. You have the IP address for that slash 30 interconnect space. This is what you would assign on your router. And then you have Amazon side. So you're the 26.26 and then Amazon would be the .25 just in this example. Now, if I sc scroll over to the right, you're gonna see the BGP st status is actually down, and that's because it's waiting on the other end. So once you have your router configured and you're pushing this VLAN and this IP information over this VXC to Amazon, then you'll be able to form the BGP adjacency and establish a, from an idle to an upstate. So that's pretty much it. This is pretty much all the steps that you would have to do 
to build out your network connection between your equipment and getting to Amazon for the AWS hosted connect. And the last piece for you is if you actually go to our knowledge base, .megaport.com. Underneath our home and cloud connectivity, we do provide step-by-step -step instruction guides on walking you through these entire scenarios. So feel free to reference that at any time. We'll give you a full explanation, prerequisites, the walkthrough on the screenshots, and then even at the bottom, if you want configuration examples for your equipment, AWS documentation will walk you through what's recommended. Uh, so that's it, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next series.